PhD futurist at futurist.com, researcher, keynote speaker, and author of Facing Our Futures, Nicholas Bamington, joining us on Canada Now. And Nick, uh, we wanted to look uh, this week, which is our final conversation of the year, um, where um, we look at the year that, that was and the year that might be. And first, where might 2023, Nick, for you have exceeded expectations? What may have surprised you in a good way? I was super excited. I thought it was going to be the year of recovery. Um, the fact is, it, it proved out that everyone was still nervous. You know, inflation was still there, even if it was just a conversation. Uh, you know, there's still that the looming, like, maybe the pandemic isn't over. But, you know, luckily that's waned a little bit. Uh, it's been really cool. I mean, I released my book. A whole bunch of cool stuff happened with that. I've yeah. done an amazing amount, a bunch of work. I've still had, it's been, still felt like a recovery year. But, yeah. More and more companies are opening their minds to possibilities about what might come next to have a longer term vision. So for me and my business, and I think for the world as a whole, it's been really, really cool. I mean, there, there's still these technology hype cycles that come in and media is like pumping out sort of generative AI hype left, right and center. Right. So yeah. I think that's been the overarching sort of crazy thing that, that's that been going on like this year alongside taylor swift making a gazillion dollars oh wow and that hot, the, you know th there's been a whole like weird tech and entertainment and life at home kind of getting back to normal yep. but like all this weird nervousness but i'm not seeing any nervousness in the last four or five weeks good People are gung ho um, for uh, pedal to the metal for 2024. Well, okay, so did we talk about uh, the positive. What about uh, the negative? Where might 2023 have fallen short of expectations? How might we have been let down? You kind of expected people would like get back together and 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 really like build build bridges and find some common ground. But obviously, Ukraine carries on. Yeah. We've got the, the Israel-Palestine conflict, yeah. which is just horrendous, um, sort of melting down right now. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of chaos in the world, right? Yeah. So it's kind of let me down, like, again, from the perspective of, you know, togetherness. But that doesn't mean that on a smaller scale, you know, at the community, country, you know, city scale, that we can't be uh, more together than ever before. We just have to work harder together. Well, in, in, in that same vein, uh, in regards to fighting climate change, um, we have, it feels like we've entered the era of global boiling uh, and, and how that's arrived. And, and while that might be very disappointing this year, wasn't this all in the science? Wasn't this all what we've been told was going to happen for years? I think we need to be really careful about the narratives, right? Okay. Yes, there's a problem. Yes, the planet is getting warmer. Um, there's going to be more chaos, chaotic sort of weather systems. Yeah. It's going to be more surprising on a yearly basis. You know, COP28 was was sort of a half promise um, and held in the United Arab, Arab Emirates that are still pumping oil as hard as they can and are still trying to, like, buy the world's best thinkers about the future by hosting them at their amazing Dubai Futures Foundation and saying, hey, we can drive a, a future that, that is different, but they're still pumping oil, right? So yeah. a number of these things are that, you know, we have to be careful. The media, I, I saw two or three articles. It's like, you know, the world is ending or like the world is boiling or what it's like. Let, let's, let's just dial down the hype and just <laughs> realize that it's just going to get more complicated. And yep. we're going to have to work a little harder. And yes, we're going to have to move. We're going to have to work out new systems. We're going to have to work out where we're going. Humans have worked things out before. But now we're kind of at a point where we've never seen this in history, where the world has really gone to hell. Yeah. Um, okay, so you mentioned uh, the pandemic earlier on. Have we all become more pandemic prepared? Is it still within our... Uh, is, is it still... Uh, fresh enough that uh, those in power would be doing something uh, about whether or not another pandemic is is to hit us? Uh, have we graduated from that and that's no longer a, a big care for uh, the, well, the, the most, pe most people out there? Do they, do they still care yeah. about that? There's a personal awareness and that's cool. Mm. Uh, 
I mean, I've been flying around the world <laughs> this year. Yeah. Have I been masking? No. Some people might judge me for that. Some people might applaud me for that. Um, it, it's kind of, you know, hu- hu- human society, as I always thought was going to happen, sort of goes back into the lockstep. There are countries that are always going to be prepared. Singapore, South Korea, they saw it with SARS, whatever. China, maybe overstepped. Very, very tough for them. But like also, you know, that that's the progenitor of, of the whole problem. But this is my favorite acronym of the year, Jeff. The weird countries are going to struggle. And weird stands for Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. The freedom of thought with no boundaries can lead to a selfishness and a breakdown of a true sense of community. And that's the problem that we've got, is that people have got short-term memories. Could a pandemic come in 20 years, maybe even earlier? Sure. Will we make the same mistakes? Same mistakes, quite likely. Why? Because people aren't very smart, um, and because they want freedom and they want independence, and they're ultimately selfish in these weird countries. Mm. Uh, looking at twenty twenty four again, um, a big thing that's going to be happening is um, all the elections that are happening in in the U.S. How might the U.S. elections uh, and election year there change the world for better or for worse? You know, the U.S. polices the world, or so they think, you know, the most powerful economy in the world. That's going to shift in the next few years with India and China sort of stepping up. The Biden government's done a lot, and it's done a lot very, very well. Um, The Trump government did a lot, and it did a lot to basically create chaos. There's still chaos uh, coming up. I think Colorado just got Trump removed from like the ballot, right? Mm. So the, they're, they're, <laughs> I, I I don't think it's it's plain sailing for the Republicans. In fact, I think the Republicans are going to nosedive pretty hard. Um, the Democrats have also got an issue because they've got an incredibly old <laughs> president in charge, yeah. albeit with a with a fantastic uh, group of people working with him. Um, so the U.S. is just chaos. You know what? Until about 2030, 2032, the world is just going to be a state of chaos. So it's it's really interesting. You, you think it's going to be like uh, that long until uh, 2032? Like that's what we've been set up for. So so th- th- there's an idea that we go through turnings and, and every turning is a, it's two or three decades, right? And um, we're in the fourth turning of this particular um, set of time, a generation. And, and this is a theory. And the fourth turning is always chaotic. What comes next is, you know, some sort of brushing ourselves down, getting ourselves back together by 2050, boom time again. Yeah. But like, you know, I, I oh. think in these terms and decades. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, there's still good people in the US. There's still good people in every country around the world. Um, the leadership in these countries should not be underestimated, but at the same time, power to the people. 2024, looking forward to it and more conversations then, Nick. Chief Futurist at Futurist.com, researcher, keynote speaker, and author of Facing Our Futures, Nicholas Bamington. Nick, appreciate it, pal. We'll talk again in the new year. Thanks for joining us all year long. Yeah, happy holidays, Jeff. All right, pal. There is uh, Nick Bamington. Bamington.